If you are looking to build a product but do not know how to code, I have a great news for you. There is this project called GPT Engineer on GitHub, which is currently trending, which will let you build software products just using very simple prompts. This really works like a human engineer. So you will specify the requirements of your product. Then the AI asks you some clarifying questions. And after that, it goes ahead and starts implementing those. In essence, it's very similar to R2GPT, but this is specifically geared towards software engineering and programming. And actually it does a pretty good job. This project was brought to my attention by a community member in the Discord server. In this video, I will show you how to install it on your local machine. Then we will look at how to properly set it up on different platforms and operating systems. And lastly, we will ask it to build a very simple website for us. Now, a few really great things about this project that you specify what you want to build. The AI asks for clarify, clarifications and then builds it for you. In terms of project philosophy, it's simple to get value and then incrementally build towards a user experience of high level prompting. So the user have to simply provide high level prompting and it lets you give feedback to the AI that it will remember over time. By default, this project uses GPT-4 API. However, since I do not have access to the GPT-4 API, I'm going to be showing you how to do the same thing using uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo or Chat GPT's API. One limitation that the authors have highlighted is chain of thought prompting is missing in this. Uh, and they think that by adding chain of thought prompting, it will be able to make it more reliable and probably will be able to follow prompt more closely. Now, first, let's see how you can install this locally. So for that, you actually need to download the code base. Now, there are two options. If you have Git installed on your local machine, you can simply copy the address to the repo and then do a git clone on it and clone the repo locally. If you do not have git install, you can simply download the whole repo as a zip file and then extract it and work with it. Now, since I have git installed on my local machine, so I'm going to be using the first option. Next, we need to clone the repo. So in order to do that, we are going to be using git clone and then in the path to the GitHub repo. So click enter and you see it created a new directory or folder. And within this folder, uh, all the contents of the repo are present. Let me see where I am. So we need to actually move to this folder. So I'm going to type in CD and GPT dash engineer. And if I do LS now, LS is basically list uh, all the files. So it shows me all the contents of the repo. So let's clear this. I'm running this on uh, Ubuntu using WSL, uh, but you can do this on Windows or Mac as well. Now, in order to install all the required packages, which are listed here in the requirements or text file, we're going to create a new virtual environment. So I'm going to use conda create dash n, and then let's call it uh, GPT engineer. I, I have already a virtual environment by this name. So conda create dash n, the name of the virtual environment, and then the Python version that you want to use. So I'm going to be using uh, 3.10.0. It's always a good practice to create separate virtual environments for all your projects. So you do not mess up your uh, Python, right? Okay, so it's already telling me that this virtual environment exists, but in your case, and the output is going to be different if you do not have a virtual environment set up. So next we need to activate it. So I'm going to say conda create, uh, conda activate, and uh, gpt-engineer and that will activate our virtual environment when you can see it here now we will install the requirements so to do that we're going to be using pip so pip install dash r and then requirements.txt when we run this um, since i have already uh, set up everything so it tells me the requirements already satisfied but in your case, the output is going to look a little different. Now, before running the code, we need to set up our OpenAI API key. If you are on a, a Mac or a Linux machine, this is the command you're going to be using. Export OpenAI API key and then equal to your API key. If you are on Windows, so you're going to be using the command set set and then uh, the same format. 
right so first we will need to go and grab our OpenAI API key here I am on my OpenAI's account I created another API key called uh, GPT engineer I just copied this now here is how you would set up your environment variable so it's going to be export the environment variable name and then the, the property you want to set as I said this will work on Linux and Mac if you were to do this on um, a Windows machine so you're going to be using sect and then open AI and, and everything that we have in here right uh, I will be removing this API key right after uh, recording this video okay so the installation is complete now let's see how we can run this so before that we actually need to go to this main.py and here um, they have defined the model that they are using so by default it's using GPT-4 API however if you are like me and you do not have access to the GPT-4 API yet then we're going to be using chat GPT that is GPT 3.5 turbo and I'm using the 16k version so with this we are all set now how do we create a new project and run our prompt so they have provided this example folder so you need to first create a folder you can name it anything you want and within that folder you need to put a file called main underscore prompt now this main underscore prompt file is going to contain your main prompt so here uh, in the example uh, project the prompt is we are writing snake in python mvc component split in separate files keyboard control right and you want to be as detailed as possible now you can run this example um, project but i want to show you how to create your own so first and foremost you actually need to create a folder let's call this a website and then within this folder we need to actually create a similar file so i'm going to just copy this and go back and paste it here okay so now uh we will just replace this with our own prompt or requirements document now here is my example prompt uh, so write an html code for a website that has a single button only use html do not include java uh, javascript or um, css when the button is pressed uh, it randomly shows one joke from a list of 10 joke show the joke as a text on the website do not uh, use pop-ups right and then some other things that i want to include now the idea for the website is very simple it's supposed to have a single button when that button is pressed um, it will show a random joke from a list of joke and also change the color of the background right so now let's say you came up with the requirements then what you need to do is you need to go to the terminal type python main.py this is the uh, file we are going to be running and then you need to provide um, the name of your project folder so in this case it's a website so I'm going to say uh, website and let's execute this but let me take it here so that we can sh uh, see all the execution and so it says that gpt4 is not available that's why it's actually reverting to 3.5 then it's asking us to provide some clarifications so what should be the text con uh, content of the button uh, should the jokes be displayed in a specific order or randomly should the background color change into a specific set of colors or any color then sh should the jokes be hard coded in html file or can be stored in a separate file right so basically it's like you're working with a human engineer uh, who is asking you for some clarification based on um, all the information that you have provided so, okay so based on the questions i came up with some answers uh, if you do not want to provide any answers so you can simply type in q and then it will move on all right so now uh, for some reason whenever i give it clarifying answers so it displays this no uh, and now let's say there is nothing else to add so i'm going to type in q and then click enter and after that you actually see that um, it started creating uh, the code right so it's showing us the code here it's created an array uh, which has you know, all the jokes right so i'm going to just wait for it to finish okay so it seems like it finished uh, writing the code now if we go back to our website folder you see it created a couple of more folders one is memory uh, and then uh, the second is workspace okay so i simply open the um folder 
if you go to workspace there's a text file which basically lists everything uh, that was displayed all right so we can just close this and then there is this html file it's actually created a uh, html file so it's not like a file format so we need to actually give it a file format so i'm gonna just call it website.html uh, I believe if you're using GPT-4, it might be uh, better at following the instructions, but let's see how the website looks like. Okay, so here is our simple website. Uh, it put a title uh, joke generator, and then there is a small button, press me. So let's press this. Great. So uh, it is showing a joke with each press and also changing the color. So it seems to have fulfilled all the requirements. This is awesome. Now, this was a very simple example in which we asked it to create a single file, but it actually works, which is pretty awesome. Now, you can build more complicated uh, products with this. So, as an example for a more complicated project, let's look at the example snake game. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to type in Python and then main.py, and now we want to run the example uh, project, right? So, let's run this, and now... It's asking me uh, some clarifying questions. Can you provide more details on the specific MVC component that need to be split into separate files? And are there any specific keyboard controls that need to be implemented? Um, I asked ChatGPT to write a requirement document for the snake game for an engineer to implement in Python. So I'm going to simply uh, copy all this and take this uh, to our GPT engineer. Okay, so I'm simply pasted everything. And now it started coming up with the implementation. So the core classes are going to be model view controller, utility, and then there are constants, and it started implementing uh, main.py function. And then there is another model.py function and so on and so forth. Okay. So, so we, when I ran this example, uh, it only created this all output.txt file, which has uh, all the code with corresponding file names. So what I did was I went ahead and created different files for example, controller.py, and then simply copied the code from here and pasted it in there. Then similarly for main.py, I did the same thing. So there are a total of four files that I created. And now we actually moved to that example workspace folder. Uh, let's try to run the uh, code and see if we can actually uh, run our game. So I'm going to say Python main main.py. Okay, and let's see. Uh, so in this case, it's a text-based game. Uh, it didn't create the graphical user interface, but let's say uh, this is the snake head. In order to move it, I'm going to use these. So let's say up, and it it's moving up, up. All right, you can see it's actually moving. That's pretty nice. And now we need to turn it right. And yay, this works actually. This is pretty good. Okay, so left. And yeah, now uh, you can also see that the length of the snake is actually increasing. So this is pretty great. Probably in the requirements, I should uh, tell it to implement it using graphical user interface. Uh, there is a package called uh, Pygame, which can be used to implement uh, games in Python. But overall, this is pretty neat. And uh, the, the fact that I didn't really have to make many changes in order to uh, make it work is pretty awesome in itself. Overall, GPT Engineer is a great project. You can implement some really complicated uh, softwares with it. I have seen some people uh, build some cool stuff with so its help. If you run into any issues, check out our Discord server. There are some great people who are helping each other out. So come join us. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.